for a loss. So now we're going to be looking at second and about 12. And if you're tuning in now, sorry we had a bandwidth problem, but I'd like to take this time to welcome you again to ColoradoSports.tv's coverage of the Rocky Mountain National Championship game. The home team in white is the Colorado. away from the Cougars forward gets in there for a small gain looks like he gained back what they lost on the first play oops sorry about that and now we're going to be looking at about third and ten for the Colorado Cougars and Scott you let me know when you're ready for this there partner so we're going to go shotgun formation max protection receivers left and right there's a high snap he's rolling outside to his right here comes the pressure his feet are taking care of business he cuts inside he's got room to go cuts further in he's got a good block in front of him he's taking it to the 40 he's going to the 30 he's got blockers in front of him makes a spin move still gaining yardage and down right about the 11 yard line i don't see any laundry on the field and that's a beautiful play by that quarterback and now mic'd up headset on next to me is the commissioner for the american development of football league damon ware thanks for joining us damon hey eric thanks for having me on tonight yeah glad to have you very nice play right there by the quarterback picking up big yardage here we're gonna go quick and go to the same formation takes a snap looking to throw it rolls out to his right waiting for somebody to get open the coverage is there throws it across the middle intercepted in the end zone and he's running it out did he get out of bounds the interception is good I'm waiting to see where the spot is he got he took that interception in the end zone and they are going to call it a touchback so that means they'll take possession at the 25 am i correct damon yeah yeah uh Great protection on the play. Uh, quarterback had plenty of time to throw the ball. Again, ill-advised throw down the middle, and, and uh, Puyallup Nation Kings makes a great play, and uh, off they go coming out and getting the ball. You know what? I don't think that I talked to you about this, Damon, but on a personal note, you know, my brother and my mother actually live in Puyallup, Washington. That's awesome. <laughs> that is. They're, wa they're watching live right now as we speak. And the Nation, the Nation Kings go ahead and break that huddle. We're going to go shotgun, two to the right, two to the left, running back in the backfield. Looks like we're at a three down lineman front for the Cougars. Handoff up the middle. The Cougars are all over it after a short gain of about three yards on that play. You know what I like about what's going on here so far today is the Kings took possession, went straight down the field and scored. And then the Cougars took possession. They went straight down the field. They could have scored, unfortunately, like you had said, an ill-advised pass. But the Cougars showed the, the Kings that they're ready to play as well. So very exciting football in the first quarter with 12 minutes, 3 seconds left in the first quarter and ticking. We're going to go shotgun formation as the Kings. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. Looks like we're still in the three down lineman front. Single safety over the top. There's a snap, handoff up the middle. He's gaining yardage, and that should be good enough for the first down. Unfortunately, I can't see the number on that running back, but uh, he definitely made some strides and got the Kings the first down they were looking for. I think it was number three, am I right? It's 33, but it's actually 32 on the roster. Deion, Deion Parnell, he's actually a great running back. I mean, he's he's tore up the Washington League this year. Very shifty back. He's very small. Uh, again, he uh, told me before the game that he's going to rush for over 200 yards, and I, I might have to believe him. The pressure applied by the Cougars forced the quarterback to step up into the pocket. He had an open receiver, but I think the pressure might have overwhelmed him. He ended up throwing it short. So now we're going to be looking at second and ten after that play. So now the Cougars' defense looks to be doing pretty good on this drive so far. Um, they started with the four front, and now they switched to this three front, and it seems to be working for them. But the runs up the middle were doing good for the Kings so far. So quarterback breaks, breaks them up and takes three to the left, one to the right. Same running back in the middle, three down lineman, takes a snap, face back, going over the top in what looks like a nine route, and there's nobody there. That's going to be incomplete, no flags on the play. And that's going to make it third and ten for the Kings. And the Colorado Cougar defense is stepping 
coming up big. And speaking of big, they make a change on the line and number 13 for the Cougars looks big and that looks to be Tommy Lynch coming in at the line for the Cougars. So it looks like they're going to try to put some pressure on the quarterback on a third and ten. This is where the Cougars got to get off the field. These third and longs, if they're going to win this game, this team's an excellent team from Washington, and this is where they got to really step up. Well, and that's time for them to do that as the quarterback breaks the little, takes three to the left, one to the right, takes a snap. Here comes the pressure, throws it outside to the right, caught. Did he get his one foot down? He's asking for a stop. He's calling it a catch, and that's going to be good enough for a first down. Not exactly a quick out route, but a well-executed uh, out route keeps the drive alive for the Puyallup Kings. So they're going hurry up as well. Looks like these offenses want to get the ball moving quickly. And we're going to stay in the same formation, both sides, three to the left, one to the right. Puyallup is waiting for the snap. He takes it. He's got time, waiting for his receivers to get open. Throws across the middle and overthrows his receiver. He was wide open around the 40 and just could not make contact with his receiver. And that's going to take us a second and 10. And we are now, that stops the clock at 11 minutes and four seconds left in the first quarter. Damon, uh, maybe you can help me. I I'd like to start calling that quarterback by his name. Do you see the number on that guy? Is it Adam Cruz? Yeah. Okay. So Adam Cruz breaks the huddle. Same formation. They're sticking with it. One to the right, three to the left. Cougars are still in the three down lineman front. Waiting for the snap is Cruz. He takes it. Quick hand off of the middle. He's got room. And he puts on the speed. Breaking ankles. He's trying to make it all the way through. He's got a blocker ahead of him. Big run by the Kings. It's a big touchdown play. That looked to be about a 56-yard touchdown play for the for the Kings. Deion Parnell. Parnell is putting on a show today. Taking advantage of that three-man front. Take, taking the space and then the Jets he put on. Uh, he put on the gas pedal and it was hard to stop him or even catch him. And His agility is obviously there because he was shifty enough to get away from the defenders. Nice play by Parnell and the Puyallup Kings. Right now, it looks like the Cougars are worried a little bit too much about the pass. And right now, again, Deion Parnell looks like a great running back again. He told me before the game he was going to put up 200. And you know what? He's <laughs> he's well on his way. He certainly is. So it looks like the Kings are set up and the Cougars are set up. Waiting for the snap as the holder. It's high and over the head of the kicker. Here comes the Cougars. He's picking it up, trying to make something. And throws it across the middle. It's fair ball batted in the air. Caught! Caught by the Kings. That's a two-point conversion. That's that's going to take the score to 15 to 0. Kings over the Cougars in a broken play. The kicker for the Kings comes out and makes a great play. We're at now 10 minutes, 55 seconds left in the first quarter, and we're looking at. I think there was a penalty on the play. We got the ref crew is uh, huddling up right now, so they're discussing something right now. So it definitely could have been something on that play. Um, what an opportunistic play by, by the Kings. They uh, picking up a ball, bouncing back 20 yards, throw it in the end zone, and for a two-point conversion, if that stands, that's a heck of a play. Waiting on the white hat. He calls a personal foul against the Cougars. The two points is going to stand. That's going to take us to 15-0 to with 10 minutes, 55 seconds left in the first quarter. So with that penalty, that's going to push the kick up off of 15 yards. So again, should be an easy touchback for the Kings uh, unless they do some kind of onside kick. Looks like we'll uh, start at the 20. Well, they're waiting for them to spot this ball. It looks like they're spotted at the 35. No, well, back judge just waved them up. They've got there a 15-yard go. penalty, so ball will be kicked off from the 50-yard line. And that's first on the foul penalty. Won't be assist on the kickoff. Yeah, this should be an easy touchback unless, like you said, they, they try for the onside. Cougars are starting off slow here. If they don't uh, do something quickly, if they don't come down and get a score, I mean, we might see uh, the Kings run away with this one early. I mean, this is why we put on these games, uh, having teams from different states that are champions play each other and, uh, you know, getting this kind of exposure and getting out of our comfort zone. This
athlete, and again, uh, let's see what he does on this series. You know, his athleticism definitely shined in the last possession when he went for that big run and almost got them in there. So we're going to go max protection, receivers left and right, four down linemen front for the Kings, waiting for the snap. Quarterback gets it, quick handoff right up the middle. He's got blockers, and then the a bunch of bodies meet up with him. Gain of about two yards on that play, so that'll take us to about second and eight. You know what? These are both two pretty big teams when the Cougars are on the are on offense. They've got a nice, heavy line, but then so do the Kings. So that is weight on weight, meat on meat, battle on battle on that line. And it's exciting to see. So we're going to break that huddle, quick huddle. We're going to put a tight end on the right side, receivers left and right, max protection for the quarterback. we got a shift on the defensive line, waiting for the snap is the quarterback, he takes it. Quick pass outside is caught. Brought down quickly. Pretty nice gain on the play. It's gonna keep the clock ticking at nine minutes, 57 and going. And we're gonna be looking at third and about, what's that, about two or three, Damon? Yeah, about two yards. About two yards, so big third down play on this drive for the Cougars, who are down 15 to zero early in the first quarter. We're gonna to have to get some production on this third down play for the Cougars to keep this drive alive. Great stunt on that last play by the defensive line of the Kings. Again, this is a great matchup within the trenches right now. So talk about a trench matchup. Third and two. We've got big on big. I formation. Receivers left and right. Kings look to have five guys up at the line. Leaning forward and enough for the first down are the Kings. Was that a quarterback keeper? I, yes, it yeah. was a quarterback keeper for a first down. This Excellent play called by the Cougars. Andreas Lane does what he needs to do to keep the drive alive for the Colorado Cougars. And the clock continues to tick with 9 minutes, 16 seconds and going in the first quarter. And the Colorado Cougars are driving on this possession. Andreas breaks that huddle. We're going to go I formation. We're going to we're going to play big on big today and it's working so far for the Cougars. Waiting for the snap is Andreas. He takes it handoff. Pressure in the backfield. Doesn't stop the running back driving his legs forward. Gain of about 2 yards on that play. That's that uh, Adonis. That's that hard fought line battle. And the Cougars are winning it bit by bit. Yeah, that run was, was by Adonis Brown. He's one of the focal points of their offense all year. Uh, he's a big back. He's a power back. He chews up the yardage. And again, he's one of those guys in the fourth quarter he usually gets loose. All right, so Andreas Lane goes and breaks that huddle. We're going to go shotgun this time, max protection. Looks like we got a tight end on the right. Receivers left and right. We're back to a four down line in front for the Kings. Waiting for the snap is Lane. He gets it. Looks like he's going quick pitch, but keeps it himself. Runs up the middle, trying to break ankles. Moving forward, still fighting for more. Finally stopped. Gain of about four yards on there, if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like it's going to be about, about third and three. Third and three on there. Boy, that Andreas Lane, you're not kidding. He's got a lot of athleticism behind him there. Um, fakes him out there with the, with the handoff and decides to keep it and breaks a few ankles to gain that positive yardage there. But again, another big third down coming up for the Kings or for the, oh, thank you. Lane and Parnell look like the focal points of both offense. Both these guys running the ball well with their legs. And again, this is going to be a tough matchup for both teams. All right, we're going to go shotgun formation, max protection, tied in on the right. They're crowding the box over the Kings. Handoff bounces outside, cuts back inside, brought down. Gain of about one yard. This is going to be a very tough decision for the co head coach, Guido Gonzalez of the Colorado Cougars at fourth and about two. Down. 15 to 0 with 7 minutes 4 seconds and ticking on the clock so let's see what Guido decides to looks do looks like they're lining play. up to go for it this is a risky call right here again this could give up some huge momentum if they don't make this but if they make it again the momentum shifts to the Cougars right now so let's see what happens big play 4th down 4th and 2 Colorado Cougars Shotgun formation, max protection, tight end on the right. There's a snap. He's going to roll out to his right. The Kings are following him. Cuts back in. Using his athleticism, he's got the first and a little bit more. Big play by the quarterback, Andreas Lane, for the Colorado Cougars, doing what he needs to do to keep this drive alive on fourth down. And it'll be first and ten for the Colorado Cougars. This is going to be a 
to me, it looks like it's going to be a very big offensive game today. <coughs> the defenses well, sure aren't doing much this game, but boy, I tell you, both these offenses are churning up some yardage, and wow, this is going to be a fun matchup from uh, both offense against both defenses. All right, so we're going to stick with the same formation or the Cougars. Shotgun, left and right receivers, tight end on the right, four down linemen front. There's the snap. Here comes the pressure. He's got time. He rolls out to his left, getting away from the pressure. Throws it over the top of the defenders and his receiver. Might have been a plan pass just to make it a safe because the coverage was there by the secondary on the Kings. Looks like a routine scramble drill. Again, uh, receivers that are down should go high. Probably uh, in air on the receiver's part on that rollout. All right, with well, that incompletion, we'll stop the clock at six minutes, one second, and the clock should start again at the snap. They are making uh, substitutions. Here are the Cougars. And he's going to break them up. We're going to stick with the same formation. Shotgun, max protection. Receivers left and right. Tight end right side. We're going to blow the whistle. I'm not sure why. I didn't see a timeout indication. But Certainly didn't see a flag, but we've got a huddle. Okay, the clock wasn't running, so we just oh, get the clock going and so uh, now off we're at, we go. Now we're at 5 minutes, 55 seconds and ticking. Same formation. We're ready to go. Second and 10 are the Cougars. Receivers left and right. There's a snap. He's got time. Quick pass outside. Overthrown. And that's going to bring up another big third down play for the Cougars. We have to execute on plays like that. The receiver was wide open on that play. The quarterback could not make the connection. Marcel Tyler's got to put his foot in the ground again, come for that slant again. It's, you know, again, you're going to take a shot, but better to catch the ball and take the shot than let it fall incomplete and put a, you know, a long third down situation for your coach. Well, that incomplete pass stops the clock at 5 minutes, 46 seconds in the first quarter. And we're going to change the formation Are the Cougars. They're going to go two to the left, stacking two to the right in a shotgun formation. Four down linemen front for the Kings. Here comes the pressure outside. He steps up in the pocket and he's hit. And it's intercepted. He's got it to the 40. He's got a block speed and finally brought out of bounds. That's two offensive possessions for the Colorado Cougars. We still got a two turnovers, but we do have a flag laying down you know, at about the 45 yard you line. You know what? There. If I had to guess, again, they got a little excited on that interception. Probably be a sideline interference. Um, again, if the if the ref did run into one of the players coming down the sideline, it'll be a 15 yard penalty. Back him up from the spot of the foul. And that's that's exactly a very good call, Damon. That's exactly what the call was. And I heard the coach screaming at the players to back up. And uh, didn't really indicate where the spot was of the foul. So interesting how they spot this. Because that's about where he went out of bounds, was at the 19. So again, if the referee didn't run into him and he just had to run around him, the first one they get will be a warning. So again, it looks like that was just a warning on this one. The next one will be a penalty that they'll mark off yardage. You know what, for the people following, you know, we're very lucky to have Damon Ware in here because not only is he the commissioner of the American Developmental Football League, he's also a long time seasoned head coach, and he's also an official for the Colorado High School Athletic Association. So uh, he's definitely going to be an asset in the box with us here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and go shotgun formation to the left, two to the right. Still on the three front are the Cougars. Here comes the pressure going across. Intercepted by the Cougars in the back, in the end zone. That's going to be a safety. Turnover for turnover. That's right. I'm sorry. Touchback. That's not two points. That's a touchback. They're going to get the possession at the 25, I believe. And... After one turnover comes another. We were just talking about how much offense was going on, and all of a sudden there's two big defensive plays <laughs> right in a row by both teams. Right. Ball will come out to the 20-yard line again on that touchback from the interception. Great play by the defensive back of the Cougars again. Now, again, if the Cougars are going to stay in this game, they've got to get something going offensively. I mean, you can't just keep coming off the field with no points. Very, very true. And with five minutes, 30 seconds left in the first quarter, it is still 15-0. to zero. But I'll tell you what, it's been one heck of a master up we've seen big defensive plays big offensive plays by both sides and we are getting exactly what Damon Ware was hoping for and that's exciting football from the Rocky Mountain National Championship 
So it looks like Lane's going to break the huddle and go under center in an I formation. Tight ends on the right side, receivers left and right, and it looks like we're going to have about seven guys in the box. Handoff cuts outside, brought down. Big man, number 30, trying to move that rock. It's Adonis Brown again. He's one of their power backs. I know he was injured throughout the playoffs. Again, he had a high ankle sprain, so I know he's probably not at 100%, and maybe the coaches better think about that a little bit. Uh, these guys from Washington aren't giving him any room to run the ball on a, on a tender ankle. You know, and when you say that, I noticed him have a slight limp. Uh, looks like to be on his right ankle, but uh, he's still out there ready to pound and ground and pound for these uh, Colorado Cougars. So we're going to go back to that shotgun formation, max protection, and we still have the tight end on the right side. And we've got about six guys in the box for the Kings. Two safeties over top, waiting for the snap. Is the quarterback? He gets it quick. Hand off with number 30. He's going to take it and push it forward, and it did a pretty good job there. It looks like we're going to be looking at about third and four for these Cougars. Uh, the refs. 28's are... helmet popped off. He'll have to come off the play for one. Come off the field for one play. Which which side was that? 28. That was the Kings. 28 of the Kings, his helmet popped off. That's a... Uh, That's an NCAA rule. Correct. Yeah. And for those watching, the American Developmental Football League has been working off of an NCAA format all year long. So I believe that the Kings are aware of that, and they're, they know they're going to have to play under the same rules. We're going to go shotgun formation, max protection, tight end on the right again. Wow, looks like we got seven in the box again. Fake the pump, fake the handoff, going deep on a nine route. Defended well. Great defense. Great defense by the defensive back for the Kings. And that's going to stop the clock at three minutes, 59 seconds, and it's still 15 to zero Kings. You know, the Cougars are a running team. They, they do a great job of running the ball and playing good defense. And again, they just haven't had a chance to get free on any runs other, other than the quarterback. You know, they, you know, they, they got to keep the defense on us by throwing the ball down the field. But I really think they need to step up that running game and get that going before they, they open up the passing game. All right. So now at fourth and about four, it looks like we're going to get ready to punt the ball. The Kings are ready for it with their... Return guy sitting, hovering right around the 40-yard line. So waiting for the snap is the punter, and it looks like... There we go. Waiting for the snap. Here it comes. Kick is up. Mike Waller Jr. is the receiver back. Bouncing towards the receiver. He's got it, and he's moving forward. He's got a blocker ahead of him. Midfield steps, out of, bounds. steps out of bounds right around the 50-yard line. It looks like he was trying to avoid it, and that ball bounced right to him. He had no choice but to take it. He seemed a little surprised by the ball in his hand, but then did a very good job of finishing the play and letting the Kings start possession on the Cougars' side of the field. Great high punt, uh, great coverage, but again, you got to finish. Again, the ball bounced high, uh, giving Waller Jr. the opportunity to pick up the ball. And again, when you're not ready for those things, again, it's, it makes it an easy opportunity for the punt returner. And great return by Waller Jr. And they've got the ball at midfield again. All right, well, it looks like the Cougars are ready on defense. And it looks like they're going to set up in a four lineman front this time. But no, oh, we're stopping the clock. It looks like we have too many players on the field for the Cougars. Is that right, Damon? Yep, that's a uh, substitution infraction right there. It'll be a five-yard penalty. We'll repeat first down. All right, so looks like we got two guys coming off the field for the Cougars now. And they make that adjustment, so we're ready to go. Quarterback's ready. Takes a snap, quick hand off up the middle. Met immediately by the defensive line. But because of that penalty, that should be close to the first down. And flags start flying in. The ref saw something in that uh, scrum in the middle. And let's see what they're going to call here. It looks 27, like... 27, Donald McKee came in at the running back spot. Uh, good run for four yards, but yeah, we've got penalties on the field, and uh, let's see what the call is. Well, these uh, refs are huddling up pretty strong, and I wish I could give you an indication of which way they're going, but let's wait for the White Hat to make the call. Damon, since you're the, since you're the ref in the box, I'll let you explain it. 
So we've got a dead ball personal foul on both teams. Those will offset. We'll replay the down. Well, that's interesting. I, I agree that it should be a replay of down, but it looks like they gave him the first down. Well, it was a dead ball foul, so again, he'll go ahead and get the yarders again. It looks like it'll be first down. First and 10 for the Puyallup Kings right at the Cougars 39-yard line. And the quarterback is going to set up in a shotgun formation. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, four down linemen for the Cougars. Donald McKee still in it running back. And going over the top. Receivers open. Caught. Did he get in? He's saying incomplete. He All he needed to do was get one foot down in the field of play. And the referee says he did not get that. But another big pass and catch by the Kings on offense is going to probably start making this uh, Cougar secondary a little nervous. And I, I don't know, what do you think, Damon? It's a little pressure from the line could help to stop that from happening because he definitely has some time. Well, I tell you what, he's, uh, he's definitely able to set up in the pocket and throw the ball down the field. So without some pressure on this quarterback, I really don't know how they're going to stop this passing game because these receivers are running down the field. They're getting three, four yards behind the defensive secondary. So uh, this is a pretty good uh, offensive line right here. It sure is. And the Cougars are in a single safety formation. No pressure on the quarterback. He's got plenty of time. Throws it across the middle. Caught and brought down. Looks like they're going to down him like right about the three-yard line. Great. Again, the quarterback's just getting not good. Two progressions. Throw the ball. Way to go if the Cougars can't get. And again, if the Cougars don't get some and at first and goal right around the yard line. We've got three minutes to zero, and we're going to spread them out. We're going to go shotgun for back, waiting for the quick pass out to the running. And the Kings traveled all. One to zero with two. Now, um, I'll admit. To Aaron, so I. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
thin air in the second half and continue to dominate this game. But a lot of time left. Again, we still got... All right, so the... over first 25 yard line long huddle I'm watching what they're doing for time huddle let's check out this formation we've got a receiver left and house or wish Handoff up the before he gained. So that Cougars running game used to be hammering him. Half you keep pound, ground and pounding your way through this game. Running team this year again. are doing but again just stick to it.
they have it. He comes up with it. The Kings think they have with the ball. After the play was done. Go to a third. We're going to go a shot. And we're going to stop. The it's going to be court. After the end of the first, we're looking at 20. Kings versus. Thank you for watching. Colorado Sports Talk. And welcome back to ColoradoSports.tv's coverage of the Rocky Mountain National Championship game. We're looking at about third and seven for the Cougars, so they're going to go shotgun formation, high snap, quick pass to Alario, and it is incomplete. That's going to bring up another fourth down play. It was open, Damon. Um, just couldn't execute on the pass. A little long on that pass, and Alario, that is Alario, am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, so that was yeah. Alario, and, and again, it just looks like the Cougars weren't ready. Half the line came off the ball at the snap, the other half didn't, so there was obviously some confusion on the snap count, but again, more uh, troubling uh, things for the Cougars, and again, we've got a fourth and long, and you don't want to be there with this Kings uh, big defensive line. All right, waiting for the huddle to break, and there it goes. And looks like we're going to stay. Shotgun formation. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Kings are in a four down lineman front. Looks like a four three. Two safeties over the top. Takes that snap. Phase back. Here comes the pressure. Quarterback rolls out to his left. Gets rid of the ball. Caught. It looks like a catch to me. The Kings don't think so. And the referees agree with me. That's going to be good for a Cougars first down. Big play right there by the Cougars. They've got to move the chains. They've got to get some points on the board just to get some confidence back. And, you know, again, this momentum is all Kings right now. Again, they've got to get the ball in the end zone if they want to stay in this game. Hurry up offense by the Cougars. Same formation, two to the left, two to the right. Waiting for the snap is the quarterback. Four down line in front. There's a snap. Quick handoff up the middle. Shoulder down. Stretches out. Gain of about two yards on that play. And that's going to keep the clock running at 14 minutes, 27 seconds and ticking. It is still 21 to 0. Puyallup Kings over the Cougars. We're going to hurry up again. Same formation. Oh, we're blowing the whistle. Are the referees? I'm not sure why. I think we've got some blood by the running back, and that's a uh, obviously a safety issue again. That running back had to come off the field until that's wrapped and covered. Excellent, excellent call. So now that they made the change, number 30, big heavy runner is back in the play, sticking with the same formation. Clock's ticking, 14.07 and going. Waiting for the snap is the quarterback. Four down line in front, a little high. He's holding out right. Defensive end is all over him. He gets away from him. Juke goes the quarterback. Gain of about maybe one yard on that play. 
a whole lot of athleticism display for a one yard gain for the Colorado Cougars. And that's gonna take us to another big third down play. Lane sure is an exciting player again. He's, uh, he's a one-man show right now. They've got to find somebody else to step up and make a couple plays. And, you know, he can't be the only guy making plays out there tonight. Now, looking at where the ball is right now, spotted at about the 23-yard line. Damon, you know the Cougars a lot better than I do. Do they have a field goal kicker who can make this? They do have a pretty good field goal kicker. Again, uh, you know, three points would be better than nothing, but right now I think if the Cougars going to stay in this game, they've got to get six. So in order to do that, they're going shotgun formation, high snap. Here comes the pressure, going over the top, thrown out of bounds. Whole lot of kings in the area. So here comes another fourth down play for the Cougars, and let's see if they decide to go for the first down or let the kicker come out and try the field goal. Looks like the offense is still on the field. Coach probably making a decision right here, but uh, the offense is still on the field. It looks like they're going for it. Fourth and eight, is a that's a big call for Coach. It sure is, but it's, just, in my opinion, not a bad call either because even if they don't get it, which I think they will, they're still pretty far deep into the Kings uh, side of the field and they're not going to give them really good field position. So we're going to go shotgun, but we're going to take motion across to the right and put three receivers to the right, one to the left. There's a snap, quick pass, high and incomplete. Went straight through the hands of the receiver. That was Marcel Tyler with the drop right there again. Uh, turnover on downs again. Uh, Kings will have the ball if they can drive again. 77 yards to, to another touchdown down and let's see what happens all right so the kings take over on downs and we're looking at 13 minutes three seconds left in the first half we are still at 21 to 0 with a whole lot of football still left to play and the kings are taking possession what's that what's that mark at the 23 yard line about the 23 yard line yeah all right, so quarterback for the Kings is going to spread three out to his right, one to his left, single running back in the backfield, four down linemen front, quick pass, looking to his left, his quarterback throws it, nine route, caught! And that's going to be a nice first down play for the Puyallup Kings, and that's going to spot the ball into Cougar territory right at the 45-yard line. And looks like the Cougars are ready to put some more points up on this board. He was tackled in bounds, but we are going to wait for the chains to set. No, we're going to run the clock. We're at 12 minutes, 51 seconds and ticking. We're at 21 to 0. We're going to do a hurry up offense. Same formation. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, four down line in front. Blitzing are the Cougars. Quick pass across the middle. Complete that blitz cost them. Opened up a, uh, an area over the top of the linebackers. Receiver made the play. And that looks like a first down to me. No, this, the refs are going to spot him just a little short. So why not hurry up? Again, this quarterback's getting no pressure. He's standing back there just picking the Cougars' defense apart. And again, if they don't get some pressure quick, uh, this could be a long night. Three receivers to the right, one to the left, waiting for the snap as the quarterback takes it. Here comes that pressure. He's forced to roll outside to his right. Somebody's open across the middle. That's going to be a first down and more as he's raking tackles and brought down in the red zone. It looks like we're going to be right at about the 16, 17-yard line. First and 10 for the Puyallup Kings. <coughs> and it looks like the Cougars are making wholesale changes at defense as a whole batch of players come in. And they have to do it quick because the Kings are again in a hurry up. Four receivers to the left, two to the right, shotgun formation, four down linemen for the Cougars. There's the snap. He's got time over to the back of the corner of the end zone. It's caught. Did he get it in? Nope, that's incomplete right there. Incomplete. He did. And he had a step on him again. I mean, this is uh, these receivers are pretty, uh, uh, they run great routes again. They're, they're getting open, and this is a problem for the, for the Cougars right now with they're not getting any pressure on the quarterback. You know what, I, I agree with you completely. I think that's part of the success that the Kings are having early in this first half is the lack of pressure created by the defensive line. And you know what, when they try and send those linebackers, 
the quarterback takes advantage of it and just throws over the top of them to an open zone and the receivers are there so Puyallup Kings are executing on this drive. We're looking at second and 10, shotgun formation. There's a snap, handoff up the middle, making people miss, spinning and finally wrapped up and brought down after a gain of about four yards. Shifty little running back. That was uh, that guy you said you were. Parnell is just, yeah, he's a shifty back. Love to see the sportsmanship up out. They tackled him, they, they helped him up. Again, I love to see that kind of sportsmanship in these games. All right, we're still going to go with that hurry-up offense. And it looks like they're letting uh, their quarterback call the plays at the line. We're at 10 minutes, 55 seconds, and ticking. It's still 21-0. Kings, third down play right now, about third and six, it looks to me. Three receivers to the left, quick snap, pump fakes, over the top to the back corner. Flag is in the air. Defenders all over the place. There was contact made, but I'm not sure if that was – Defensive or offensive? What do you what do you think, Damon? I think that looked like defensive pass interference again. The, the, we got the defensive back got there a little bit early, played through the receiver again. I'm I'm, I'm going to assume this is a defensive pass interference. Yes, sure is. So now NCAA rule is 15 yards. So it'll be half the distance to the goal uh, on that call. Let's see where they spot the ball. Yeah, it looks like they spotted right at the two-yard line. That's exactly what the Cougars didn't need right now, being down 21-0 to zero with 10 minutes, 42 seconds left in the first half. So it looks like the Puyallup Kings are going to go shotgun. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Heavy box. Shifting to the left are the Kings. He's rolling out left, waiting for somebody to get open. Flags thrown everywhere. Looks like the a full start stopped. right there. Yep. I agree with you, and that's what the refs are saying. It looks like the left guard got, got off the ball a little bit early again down here in this short area. This is the place you can't make mistakes, but again, uh, the Kings are, are driving again. They haven't had a uh, possession yet in the first half. They haven't moved the ball over midfield, so great job by the Kings tonight. Indeed, and pushing them backwards is exactly what the Cougars are needing, so it'll still stay first down, though, correct? Correct. And now it's first and goal at From about the 8-yard eight eight yard line. line. And you know what? Shotgun's been working for him, so why not stick with it and send two receivers to the left, one to the right, max protection. We're shifting the running back out of the back of the end uh, backfield. Rolling left is the quarterback. Here comes the pressure. Can they catch him? I couldn't see. It was an incomplete pass right there. Wow, we had two Kings receivers wide open right there, and great effort by the defensive back. But again, that's awful scary play, uh, you know, with the coaches looking on and seeing two guys wide open. So it looked like it was uh, the def uh, defensive back was able to knock that down, Damon? Yes. So good play by the Colorado Cougars defense to stay in his zone and do what he needs to do. And now we're looking at second and goal. And yep, no need to go under center when shotgun's been working pretty much all day for you. Heavy line though, to the left, one to the right. Now we're gonna shift that running back to the left. Handoff, bounce outside, no, fake keeper thrown to the back corner of the end zone. Out of bounds, nobody there. The Colorado Cougars defense is doing what they need to do, holding them in their own red zone. And we're looking at third and goal at the eight for the Puyallup Kings. Again, a little misdirection play with uh, the running back uh, flaring out to the right again. Uh, ball just thrown out of bounds. Uh, you know, this quarterback, uh, Adam Cruz, is doing an excellent job tonight. Again, I'm sure he did a great job up there winning the championship. And, and again, he's playing a great football game right now with uh, just a little uh, over five minutes out of the second quarter. You know, and that misdirection was well executed, but the Cougars' defense held where they needed to go. I think I was the only one who was confused on that last <laughs> play. So we're going to go shotgun formation to the left, two to the right, four down lineman front. Quarterback is waiting for the snap. He gets it. Comes the pressure. He's first to roll outside. Bobbles up. Intercepted by the. Very good play by the Cougars defense. 
very good play right there to get that interception. Again, it's it's tough. Uh, came out with one. They definitely didn't want to put another six up on the board for the Kings right there. Excellent defensive play by the Colorado Cougars. Gets the turnover, and it looks like they're spotting it deep in the Cougar territory. They're giving it to them. What's that look like? About the right seven-yard line? Right, right on the five-yard line. Right on the five-yard five line. Five yard line. So we've got 95 yards to go to score with 10 minutes, 20 seconds left in the first half. It is still 21-0 Puyallup Kings over the Colorado Cougars, making a late substitution out of the Kings because the Cougars break the huddle. We're going max protect in a shotgun formation. Waiting for the snap is the quarterback. Long snap count, and it's worked. Drew him off sides. That's going to stop it. I'm going to assume that's going to be an off sides by the defense. Again, the defense can't jump into the neutral zone and cause the offensive lineman to false start. So, again, I'm going to assume this is going to be on the, on the defense here. That was a very well executed long snap there. It's not a long snap count. And uh, he did exactly what he needed to do because they have been snapping pretty quick. So I think that was a, a well plan. Yep. Right now the Cougars got to do everything they can to, uh, you know, to get the Kings out of their comfort zone. So going on two, going on three, you know, going, going quick snap. Again, right now they've got to mix some things up because the Kings got their number right here in the first half. So after the penalty, it is first and five to go for the Cougars. Same formation, snap, handoff up the middle, met and grabbed by a bunch of King jerseys and he looks like he did make it back to the line of scrimmage he sure did so it's going to make a second and five from the 10 yard line for the Colorado Cougars and Adonis Brown uh, again on the carry again their big back again he's rubble for a lot of yards and hey they're standing up at the line of scrimmage this uh, Kings defensive line is big and, and agile so again this is a, an excellent matchup in the trenches Uh, where we gave to Dion Parnell, but it looks like Ben Simon watching live. Chris McClutchin. It's 30. Shotgun. We got a Cougar player clapping his hands. Oh, no. They're calling it against the Cougars. So that's going to push them back. Again, Ben, thanks for the for the update. But uh, unfortunately, we do not have a Chris uh, McCutcheon on the roster here. So Is there again, not a 33? Uh, <laughs> there's not a 33 on the roster. Um, so again, we were assuming that was number 32, Dion Parnell. But how interesting, they've got two 32s. <laughs> so, but, but neither one of those is named Chris. So again, uh, <laughs> in interesting that we don't have him on the roster here, but sorry about that. Big run by Lario Vital again. Nice. Okay, looks close to a first down. Looks oh, like he's yeah. about a yard short of the first down, so it should be third and short here. We're going to stop the clock our, because they're the giving down. it to him. Melario Vital gets the first down for the Cougars. After the chains are set, we're going to start running the clock, and we're in a hurry up. Shotgun formation, two receivers right, one left. There's the snap. Handoff up the middle, pushing forward. Gain of about two yards on the play. <laughs> <laughs> getting a lot of feedback from all over the country and we want to thank everybody for watching ColoradoSports.tv's coverage of the Rocky Mountain National Championship game and it looks like we've got a shoe tying in in situation there so I'll let Robert Chico know that no, I did not kick a wall. I did not force the interruption of the broadcast, but we are well, we are happy to be back. Feel free to leave us comments on ColoradoSports.tv, and we will respond to your questions. Handoff up the middle, fighting for yardage. They met him immediately. He tried to bounce outside. It wasn't there. He just leaned forward, and it looks like it was good enough to get him back to the original line of scrimmage. So another big third down play coming up for the Colorado Cougars, who are down 21-0 to with eight 
eight minutes, 14 seconds, and ticking left in the first half. Talk about making something out of nothing. They had him for about a three-yard loss, but again, he was able to bounce his way up to get back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gained a yard, but a good run by Ilario again. All right, shotgun formation, max protection, two receivers to the right, one to the left, four down lineman in front for the Kings. There's a snap, fakes the handoff, throw on the slant, is caught, fighting for extra yardage as the receiver finally gets brought down after getting the first down play for the Colorado Cougars. We're going to stop the clock to move the chains, and we are at 7 minutes, 47 seconds left in the first half, and the Cougars are driving. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there, but they are executing on offense are the Colorado Cougars. Unfortunately, one of their best receivers, Marcel Tyler, on the catch, and again, he limped off the field, so hopefully he's okay and he's able to get back in there, and hopefully we'll see him back uh, soon. All right, same formation, shotgun, max protection, two receivers to the right, one to the Going. And that looks run like looks like it's the close to And the hurry up offense did not allow the Kings to make the substitutions that they wanted to. We've got a player for the Puyallup Kings down. And as this game takes a break to check on that lineman, we will take a break. And again, thank you so much for watching ColoradoSports.tv's coverage of the Rocky Mountain National Championship game. Looks like number 92, Sean Lovelace, defensive tackle at about 6'4", 280. Took a little dinger on that one, but he was able to get off, off his, on his own accord and walk himself to the sideline. And we're just going to get this game started right back up with 6 minutes, 44 seconds of ticking. King or third and short for the Cougars. Hands off up to the middle. Alario Vatel. Helmet comes off after. Got to come off for one play, but let's see what the flag is. Again, it shoots a first down, but we got a flag on the field. Oh, I didn't see the flag, but he definitely had enough for the first. If it's a let's personal foul, I think is. you take that. Absolutely, you take that. Absolutely. That play would be at the end of the run and enforced from there, so. Uh, but let's wait for the call. All right, so we've got a zebra party hanging around in the 40-yard line. Looks like the White Hat's ready to come out, asking the Cougars to back up until they get it figured out. Here we go, Damon. It's on you. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. So we'll go 15 yards from the end of that run. Again, it was already a first down, but it'll still be first down with 15 yards uh, handed to the Cougars. So, with six minutes, 34 seconds left in the first half, it is still 21 to zero, Kings over the Cougars. But the Cougars are driving on a possession that started on their own five yard line and they are finally past midfield and they are in Kings territory. We're gonna go I formation, handoff, bobble on the ground, covered up by the Cougars. Bad exchange there, that could have went bad, but instead, the Cougar player, and it looked like that was Alario. Oh, no. 
Alario. Yeah, that must have been Alario. That was Bertram James again. They're they're going to go ahead and roll their running backs in and out, get keep them fresh, and and hopefully they can get that running game going. But that's not a good start when when your third string running back comes in there and coughs up the ball. But again, luckily no turnover there. All right, so we're not going to go with the hurry up, and we're finally going to huddle after we make some changes in personnel. And now we're ready to go with five minutes, 49 seconds and ticking left in the first half. We're going to go shotgun formation, max protection, two to the right, one to the left, four down linemen front for the Kings, waiting for the snap as the quarterback. He takes it, fakes the handoff, moves up for, bounces outside, cuts back the other way. His athleticism is shining right here. He gets away from the defender. Big block to the 30, 35, pushed out of bounds. What an amazing performance by that quarterback. He went all the way to his right, had to roll back all the way to his left, and then ended up. Oh, there's a looks like there's a flag on the play. That was an excellent peel back block by number 30. Again, to spring Audris Lane uh, to the secondary. Let's see what the flag is. It looks like it might be on the Cougars. Another flag thrown right there. Did he throw a second flag right there? The white hat right there? No, I think again he threw that late. All right, we got a zebra party at the Kings 45-yard line. Hope again this isn't a targeting call. I think that was an excellent uh, block by number 30. They, they waved it off. Waving That's it a off. good job. Excellent way by the guys to get together on the officiating crew and talk about that, make sure they got the right call. So, again, good job to the, to the White Hat for uh, making that happen. You know, and good job by the quarterback of the Colorado Cougars showing and displaying an amazing set of athletic skills by getting away from that rush of the Kings and keeping this drive very alive. Again, this started at their own five-yard line. We're at five minutes, six seconds left in the first half. We're going to go heavy formation. Hand off to Vitale, bouncing outside, making people miss. Flags are thrown, fighting for extra yardage. That's going to be close flag. to down. But let's see what that flag is for. It was thrown by the White Hat. It's a holding and call on the offense. Yeah, we are going to get it's a holding. Go 10 yards from the previous spot again. We'll still have first down, but that takes a big run off the board for Valerio Vital. Uh, again, Cougars got to stop making the mistakes down here in the, in the money zone. All right, well, we've got a stoppage in play, I'm guessing, just to move the line of scrimmage. Got another huddle by the officiating crew, and they want to make sure they get them right, so these are excellent to huddle up for those guys and make sure they got the right call. Well, this one's taking a while. Because right now we're looking at first and 10 at the Kings 24 Well, there's two line. flags on the field, so it looks like there's definitely going to be holding on the Cougars and look like, again, a personal foul face mask, again, on the defense. Again, those penalties are offset because they were both live ball fouls. So, again, we'll replay the down at first down. All right. After that, so we're, we're steady at four minutes, 54 seconds left in the first half. And what a wonderful drive being performed today by the Colorado Cougars. Again, they started at their own five yard line and they are already in Kings territory. And there must have been a timeout call. It's like a timeout well. call, yep. So I'll tell you what, as they take a break, we will also take a break. And thank you so much for watching Colorado Sports.tv's coverage of the Rocky Mountain National Championship game.
And welcome back to Colorado Sports TV's coverage of the Rocky Mountain National Championship game. We are still at 21 to zero with five minutes, 54 seconds left in the first half. Cougars are on a long drive. We're looking at first and 10, heavy formation. Hand off to the fullback. He pushes forward, heavy, dragging defenders with him. Oh my God, there was a turnover and the Kings have recovered. It's going to be first and 10 after the fumble. That's exactly what the Cougars did not need to happen on this drive. They were performing so well and then they ended up giving it up. Again, the refs are huddling again. I don't know if they've got the right call yet, but they are going to talk about it. But it still looks like the Kings ball. It'll be first down the Kings. I tell you, that's the last thing the Cougars wanted to see right there. They've had three really, really good drives deep into the, the Kings territory. And again, to come up with no points, that's got to be frustrating for the coaching staff. Number six, Joseph Tatali, linebacker at about six foot tall, 245 pounds, comes up with the turnover, and the Kings take over on offense. Handoff to the shifter running back, and he's got room and blockers. Finally brought down, gain of about eight on that run. Very well executed. You're right, that running back has got quite a bit of skill for the Kings. He's definitely a great runner again. He's small and shifty again. He runs with his pad levels low again, and he's he's got great footwork again. I, I you know, he's tough to stop. Looks like we're going to go in the hurry up because it's worked for the Kings all evening long. We're going to go shotgun formation. Three to the right, one to the left, four down linemen. Two safeties over the top for the Cougars waiting for the snap. He gets it, steps up. Nobody's open. Sacked on the play. Colorado Cougars defense steps up big and takes them backwards. They're going to be looking at about third and about eight after the sack. Wonderful performance. Finally some pressure. And that's what we were waiting for in the Cougars to push some pressure on that quarterback. And they did it well and came up with a sack. And the looks like the Puyallup Kings are finally going to huddle. <laughs> What a little pressure does for you, but again, uh, quarterback for the Kings hasn't been pressured all night. His, his jersey's as clean as it can be, and that was the first sack on him again. Let's see if that changes what he does in the pocket. All right, two safeties over the top for the Cougars. Shotgun formation, takes a snap, pitches outside, caught. And the defenders are right there immediately. Was the ball. Ball's on the ground, and the Cougars oh, recover. I don't think they got it. I don't think they got it. The Kings think they have it, waiting on the call. Did the Kings see, recover that? It, it, it might be an incomplete pass if they, they feel that he didn't have possession of the ball. Yeah, but they're spotting it there. So, again, if they're spotting it there, they got catch, fumble out of bounds. So it looks like it's going to be a first down. Oh, the Cougars need to take advantage of situations like that. When, when the ball's on the ground like that, you have to do your job and recover. But this game goes fast. And uh, the Kings were all over it, and they recovered. And that's after the fumble and the recovery. That's going to give them first and 10. And we're looking at three minutes, 14 seconds, and ticking on the clock. Spot. I'm, I'm going to think that might be a holding call or a block in the back, but we'll see what the call is. Well, waiting on the officials. I'm going to guess holding against the Kings. Because it looked like the line judge on the far side was the one who threw that flag. So here he goes. It's your call, Damon. So we do got holding on the Kings again. That's going to be a 10-yard penalty from the spot. We'll back that up and replay the down. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wind the clock now with two minutes, 54 seconds and ticking. It is now second and 10 for the Puyallup Nation Kings. We're going to go shotgun formation. 
Looks like we've got two receivers to the right, to the left. Quick pitch outside. It's caught. Brought down immediately. Good coverage by number one of the Cougars. And that is... <laughs> Shea Shepard. No, that's uh, that's Jabin Prince. Job. Oh, okay. I see the wrong number there. All right. So it looks like uh, the Kings are waiting for the ball set to go hurry up again because they've been doing it. They are able to make a substitution in that line. Looks like maybe somebody's helmet came off. Great open field tackle right there by Prince again to, to, to keep the damage to a minimum. Again, we've got second and five. Again, Cougars got to come up with a play here with two minutes left in the in the second Four. quarter. Hey, we've got to make a play if Colorado's going to stay in this game. I guess we're not going to take the two-minute warning because it's now it's one minute, 57 seconds and ticking. There's a snap. Throw it outside, and they are just executing on this drive. Quarterback to receiver. Number 22 on the reception. That's Campbell again, a uh, kid that I had the pleasure of meeting when I was down at CSU Pueblo. Again, he's a short guy, but he's got excellent power in his tackling abilities. Again, nice job on limiting the damage right there, but this quick passing game is really hard for them to stop, and again, Again, they've got to come up in some press coverage and try to slow these receivers down. And if they don't, again, the quarterback hasn't been pressured and he's getting the ball off quickly. We're going to go shotgun formation. Takes a step back. No pressure. Throws outside and it's complete. Brought down. Stretches out. That's another first down play for the Puyallup Nation Kings with one minute, 33 seconds. As soon as the flag or the sidelines uh, chains are set, we should go back to running the clock. It looks like we've got another helmet coming off on the offensive line for the Kings, and I think it's the same player. So the referee asks for the clock to wind, and we're at 127 and ticking with 21 to 0, and the Kings are driving first and 10 at the 40-yard lines. Shotgun formation to the left, two to the right, four down line in front for the Cougars. There's a the snap. Here comes the pressure. Steps up. Has to roll out right. Waiting for somebody to get open. Is he going to try and keep it? Dumps the pass off. Incomplete. Off the ground. That'll stop the clock at one minute and nine seconds left in the first half. Very impressive performance by the Puyallup Kings today. Uh, that quarterback, Adam Cruz, is doing what he needs to do. He's got very good presence in that pocket, doesn't he, Damon? Absolutely, but but what's more impressive, the guys that don't always get all the credit, again, that offensive line has given him all the time in the world, and again, I mean, really, he's been pressured one time the whole game, and again, if you're a quarterback that's behind a line like that, I bet you're real happy with those guys up front. Can't disagree with that point. We're going to go shotgun formation, stacking two receivers to the left, spreading two to the right. Two safeties over the top. Off. Is the ball on the ground? And the Cougars recover the fumble. Half of football. Big plays on offense by both, both teams. Some special teams action going on. It's still 20 seconds left. The score. Ball. Halftime with some. Well, in order to try to accomplish this, we're going to left shotgun. There's no, it was illegal. Cougars, just a little bit of.
the audience know who that is, but we do have a player down on the field, again, from the scrum. And, uh is he still down? Injured player, we'll take a break. And that'll stop Nation Kings to score before the end of the half. But there's... So if a player is stopped, the score of momentum stopped in the... Before he goes out of bounds, he's being pushed back. The ball will be, uh, you know, considered inbounds. It was hard to see. Uh, we can't... See. Again, uh, that's what looks to be the call, that he was... as he walks off to the sideline. There is a chance that they'll still put time on the clock. 